This is step three for converting your Battle for Skull past dwarfs into Chaos Dwarfs. In the last step, we added the scale mail armor to the front and back side. And in this step, we're going to add a mask and his beard. Now, if you've ever seen the Hell Cannon Chaos Dwarfs, they look something like this. And you can see they have sort of a scale bib under their mask. And then they have these long sort of braided or dreadlock style beards that either have skulls or or um, pointy sort of spear tips on the end of them. Um, the spear tips kind of look like that. So they're kind of spikes there. See this guy has a skull helmet or a skull face mask. This guy has more of a just sort of a standard mask. So it's really up to you what kind of mask you want to put on your Chaos Dwarfs. Uh, a few good pieces you can use are um, Chaos Warrior helmets. You can basically cut off the front half of it and then place that on the front. And then you can add the beard after that. There's also the old sort of the old uh, Chaos Warrior helmets. You can use the same idea, just chop them off. Anything that looks sort of like a skull or a, a nice helmet works. The bit I use for my own guys is from the Chaos Mutation Sprue. Uh, the shoulder pad sort of has this skull on it, and I've been using those for my warriors. So I've already cut one off, and now I'm just going to glue it to the front of the dwarf. So you can use any sort of plastic glue, plastic cement, you could use super glue if you want. So just a small dab of glue. And then you can put the face mask on there. Make it centered however you like it. So now you see he's got a mask on there. Nice and evil looking. So now we're gonna add the beard. The beard is made with green stuff again. Basically what you want to do is you want to roll out a very long, thin tube of green stuff. Sort of just roll it until it's sort of even. And then what you want to do is you want to take your sculpting tool again. And you want to cut off a section at a time. Usually I can fit three rolls of beard. One, two, three. And you sort of assume that the rest is behind the shield. So I'm just going to cut off a small section of the tube. So you can see I've got the piece. You can sort of roll it in your fingers just a bit to sort of fix the ends that have been sort of pressed flat by when you cut it. And then all you want to do is you just want to line it up so that it slightly overlaps the armor at the front and then sort of goes all the way up to under his mask. Now the stickiness of the green stuff should hold it there by itself. So then you want to cut another one. The, the length that I cut is about a centimeter long. Or a little less than half an inch. So you can see I put the second one on there. And the stickiness of the green stuff is holding it nicely in place. And then I'm going to grab the third one. If you want to make them slightly smaller each time, that works too because then it sort of is building from the center and going a little taller each time. A little smaller rather. So now you can see I've got three basically tubes just sitting nice and snug against the front of the dwarf. So now you want to really make those those sort of curls in the beard. And to do this I use a basically a strategy where I crimp one side and then I crimp the other side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold it horizontally to me and then I'm going to take my tool and I'm just going to with very little space in between just add little straight sort of indentations all the way along the one side of this beard. So I've got the standard sculpting tool again and I've wet it and now I'm just going to crimp it along. I find you don't need too much water here or else you're going to 
obscure yourself and you're not going to be able to see what you're doing because the green stuff is going to take on the water. So very carefully bracing myself, I'm just going to start pressing in indentations. So all the way along the top part of the green stuff. You don't want to press too hard or else you're really going to flatten the green stuff and you don't really want that. So now I'm going to do on the top of the second layer exactly what I did. Careful not to damage the other parts. So to get an idea how many I'm putting in here, let me just count this third row. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I got about ten indentations on the smallest one. So now you can see it's kind of looking flat. I've done all the one side, not looking too bad. And now you want to do the exact same thing, but you want to flip it around this time so you can still work at it from the top. So now I'm going to do it again here. You'll find that um, the third one, the one that's beside the arm, it might need three times over because part of it's not going to be obscured by the shield or the other row of beards. So in the end on that one I do three passes and then on these other ones I'm just going to do the second one. You don't really have to worry about lining it up with the other side. If you really want to be detailed you can try that. But it kind of looks nice when it's sort of alternating or just randomly appearing. The beard is a very important part of a Chaos Dwarf. It's sort of their signature look as their curly long beards. So now you've seen that I've crimped both sides and I've got a very nice sort of beard pattern going here. What I like to do now is um, sort of just add sort of a cylindrical look to it by sort of putting a little hole in the bottom of the beards. I usually take off the base to do that. And I'm looking for my tool here. You can pretty much use anything for this as long as it has a sharp point. So I just grabbed actually a pin off my wall here. And basically what I want to do is I want to just sort of create a hole on the bottom there. And then we've got our beard and our mask. So now we really want to wet this dry because we don't want to mess up that detail. And after that we're going to add the little bib on the front that we saw at the start of the tutorial. So let me just get a sort of a close-up view if I can here. So it's a very simple process. You just make three tubes, add them on, and then crimp each side. So now we've got something that's actually resembling a Chaos Orb now. Stay tuned for part four.